Paul, thank you for joining us today. We're at the one-to-one -one conference in London. Tell us a little bit more about the company. Thanks, Scott. Um, I think everybody is, understands right now we're looking at uh, EVs, and EVs be lots of enthusiasm for the lithium, vanadium, practically every metal on the periodic table fits into a battery these days. But really what a battery does, it powers an electric motor. And what we're focused on is not the copper in an electric motor, but the permanent magnets. So typically an electric vehicle has one or two kilograms of permanent magnets, which are made up essentially of neodymium pricedinium. Now I know you can't say that or spell it, neither can I, so it's NDPR. And right now, the world's magnets are produced by the Chinese. They control 87% of the market. And in fact, there's only one other major supply of neodymium. That's Linus Corporation in Australia. It's got a market capitalization of about 2 billion Australian dollars. We have a project, our company's Pensana Metals. We're listed on the Australian Stock Exchange code PM8. We have a very, very large, it's world-class, deposit of NDPR. And it just happens to be right next door to a $1.8 billion railway line that links to a $2 billion port. So our simple view is we're simply going to mine the ore, turn it into a concentrate, put it into containers on the railway line and ship it all the way to China to processing. And, and if we get the numbers right, we've just put out a pre-feasibility pre study last week prepared by the Wood Group we will be the second biggest producer of NDPR and concentrate in the world, not far behind Linus, but importantly, we'll be the world's biggest supplier of NDPR and concentrate, the only one at a time when China controls the market. But the real thing is that you know better than anybody is that lots of mining companies, junior mining companies have these plans of uh, great projects that are gonna go ahead, but there's one thing that's really important up front, and it's the key number, is what is the capital cost? And in this case, the capital cost is 131 million US, which the you and I know is very financeable. Once it gets much bigger than that. So we're in the position where we're presenting to institutional investors in London. We, Fidelity, have already taken 10% of the company. We're re-domiciling the company from Australia to London. We're gonna be main board listed in January. We'll become the rare earth name for the UK investors, major producer, and if you want an exposure to EVs and ultimately wind turbines, you know, an EV has one to two kilo, kilos of permanent magnets, an offshore wind turbine has three tons. So it's a very, very strong thematic, which we hope to uh, convince institutional investors of. And what about time frame, Paul? What's the time frame for moving this project forward? We're hoping to be in construction in the first half of next year. We're at PFS now, we're rapidly moving. We're quite advanced on the PFS. Many aspects of it are virtually DFS. Um, we will expect to be licensed in the first quarter. We're, or as you know, we're already talking to debt providers. Um, we're talking to financiers. We're a long way down the track. And the one-to-one -one conference, how's that been for you? Really good. We, we've had a, an absolutely packed out schedule. The only reason I've got five minutes with you now is my last one finished early. So uh, a lot of interest.